on the second floor, everybody, of the armory. Um, and the second floor of the armory is used by uh, a multitude of different businesses over time. And for the time being, I'm trying to make it very art-based. And luckily, I have beautiful visual artists around me like Evan. Yes. So tell me about this one. And this one, I think, also was generated from a moment in time, just simply in my room. And I think the green was generated from a monitor, and the red, again, kind of like capturing some of the red tones that I typically enjoy in my in my room. Um, but again, a very nice capturing of chromatic uh, kind of color schemes in a way that the eye, the eye finds pleasing just from a very simple standpoint of mm, red is wrong, green is a little bit more lively. And there's a nice, like, busyness in a way, but it's also a very gentle representation of color because of the rounded, obviously, a very round, uh, <laughs> There's a lots of round surfaces yeah. on all of this. Yeah. And there's something about the lack of pointed edge mm. that really allows the, the eye to just investigate everything in a way that is very uh, kind of casual. And the eye does not find itself being drawn too closely to any one point, mm. but to kind of enjoy all of it mm. at, at one time. Interesting, and I see that. Those little bits of beautiful lavender and teals that are spread out so that, yeah, you don't have so much red or so much green. That's really interesting for me. And, and these are kind of the reasons why I really like mm. this work, actually. Yeah. That's a very cool description. Yeah, and there's something just gently pleasing about walking into a space where one of these is hanging. There's some kind of immediate response that the mind has. I, uh, I got the luxury of Ammon bringing these beautiful pieces to the camera. So tell me about these, please. Yeah, these were a fun trio uh, that I had made over actually the span of probably a few different years and I just kind of pulled from the collection because I thought they would be, they would sit very nicely together. And both of these on top are both flower um, photographs. Um, this one is simply a combination of flowers in which I had reversed the color palette after creating the image. So it's a, a little bit more ethereal of a, of a chromatic representation. Um, this picture, I believe, I took uh, of a bunch of flowers in a supermarket. Really? So it's, <laughs> it's really fun to find. Are they in? Uh, sorry, I, I was wondering, were the, were the flowers like packed or in? They were just kind of bundled together, you know, sometimes in the flower section of, you know, our, our coveted star market and <laughs> they have some nice like bundles of flowers together and sometimes i'll while well, grocery shopping I'll, I'll take a moment and just oh that looks nice i'll take a picture of that mm -hmm. and then, just because they, they have a nice representation of shape representation of what appears to be a face is very much akin to a representation of a face, but a lot of that is based on psychological representation of what we think of as being eyes. Here, how it is that we immediately construe a face as occurring around whatever we see as being the eyes. and. <laughs> and all of this is based on a photograph of a pile of leaves that I found somewhere. Um, and then I reversed the colors, so what appears dark then becomes light, vice versa. And I just found this, this particular shape area so appealing, and really it spoke very strongly to me. So I thought, I've got to 
I have to print this and I have to just create. And you guys were so incredibly nice, thoughtful to have, you just so happen to have this incredible frame. From Stickney! Yeah. <laughs> it is right next to me. And lo and behold, he is sitting inside this magnificent golden frame. And yeah, it's, it's a great piece. I really love how this piece came out as well as um, you should know all of these pieces I made entirely on my phone with my hands. There's really? Not, there's not a single moment of Photoshop wow, you're or anything, it. everything, which is a big part of, has been a very big part of my work for years. Um, I have a very hard time sitting down in front of Photoshop and trying to do anything. Um, I can't even select what, what I'm working on in Photoshop. Because you're feeling, you want tactile. And the immediacy, mm. it might sound a little bit attached, but the immediacy of being able to create shapes by rotation, opening and closing of one's hand, just allows for a lot more nuance and being able to find what you want to create. And I've just found that to be such an appealing approach that I've just stayed with it. And the one thing that I do to process these afterwards so that they can be enlarged to this scale is I vectorize them in which the computer simply reads which colors it sees and which shapes it detects where the lines are and it redraws the entire image as only colors and shapes so it's a very good means of very minimally processing the image so that it is still representing itself fully, but it's just a, a little cleaner to be able to print in, especially in a larger scale. Because if you try printing a photograph that you've made on your phone, at this scale, it will look very blurry. Very blurry, right. Um, but vectorizing it allows you to be able to apply it to a lot of different things. Like I can print this on the side of an entire wall and it will still maintain the integrity of these lines which has allowed for a lot of different approaches that have been very um, helpful in creating different types of applications for this artwork like I can make tables out of this image and yes it opens up the possibilities to a lot of other approaches very interesting. What I, I I also want to bring up the fact of you know I'm always trying to figure out because that's the fun part you know like this mm -hmm. building is a bunch of businesses right. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, almost all of those businesses right now are closed. Mm -hmm. But there are just a few. There's a handful of operating businesses, including the gallery and this wonderful, really nice guys, Dead Moon Audio. Yeah. And my reason, you remember when I talked to you, I was like, oh damn it, it'll be something that they like, yeah. you know, people who like music, recording, engineering yeah. of this type. I was like, they'll love it. And I'll tell you what else are, are the businesses that, like, where he is. So Ammon's right here where the people come, they do come and see this. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's kind of strategic because they come in to get recorded. Yes. So they see this and, you know, you can know if something's good because you don't get any complaints. Yes. <laughs> and I put this massive. <laughs> Thank you for blowing it up here. Oh, like, yes. You know, I think this is the right one. And I'm very, mm -hmm. very happy to see that nobody complained, which means they like it. Yes. <laughs> there's another, and what's even more fascinating, is there's a small office that is used by Club here, by the way. Did mm -hmm. you know that? Mm -hmm. And they come in sometimes to play hard. Very on occasionally because everything's closed out. They also like this, and they nice. so it's an interesting flow of yes. where you're placing this. And thank you for. And I wanted to talk to you about that also on purpose because can you talk about uh, kind of your DJing and musical philosophy and kind of why I kind of want to put this energy here anyway? Oh yes. Yeah. So as I've been a musician since kindergarten practically, um, having been a classically trained French horn player, an electric bass player, having been a French horn player for, what, since the fifth grade, um, as well as having been a DJ for the last 20 years or so, obviously a lot of my life has revolved around music, either appreciation for music, music creation, it's just, you know, I've been living it for a very long time. Um, and 
there's something about the creative elements and the creative um, possibilities within the realm of music that I found myself applying to visual creation once I had the means of doing it because honestly it was because I needed another avenue because at that time I couldn't um, I couldn't continue creating things physically with my hands because I wasn't able to work in the um, furniture creation, woodworking, um, wood finishing environment as I had done for many years, for about 15 years or so. I was working in wood shops, creating furniture, architectural woodwork of various kinds, more high-end stuff. But after I had brain surgery, I needed another avenue to continue that creative, especially working with my hands. So I actually found that kaleidoscopic shape design was a avenue that I just gravitated towards because the meditative aspect of creating these images entirely with my hands allowed a kind of meditative, creative approach that really allowed a very healthy means of me to redirect that kind of creative energy. And so I just kept refining the idea. I just, I create so many of these. Like when I'm transferring a week of created images from my phone to my computer, there'll be like 400 wow. images that I've made because it just, you can keep just creating, like changing little nuance. The thing about kaleidoscopic design is that whenever you're altering the image in any way, you're changing everything at once because I'm not, I'm doing very minimal post-processing, say like Photoshop style manipulation of these individual mm -hmm. shapes. Right. Everything is the image that I'm going for. Uh, and so you get a lot of different types of image within image. People will come to me like a year later and say, oh, I see a chicken right here. Yeah. I never saw that chicken. Very interesting. And in that moment, I look wow. at it and I'm like, hey, you know, that does look like a chicken. And so like even years after creating these images and printing them, I'm still finding new things. Oh, them. I love that. And so it's, it has a very nice element to it, the fact that the entirety of the image is being created at once. And I rather enjoy that part of it. And it allows you to really find many different possibilities within the larger story of the shape and the Beautiful. shapes within shapes that are Beautiful. being created.